everybody. AVM Superhero here. How you guys doing today? I don't know if I have a little lag on or this or not. But um, I'm doing this caregiver stroke survivors or stroke survivor caregivers. I, I would like to um, acknowledge them and, and, and show the world what is actually going on with these caregivers. So I created this series it's a four, six part series. I already did three already, but this time I want to bring up a male. Um, this guy's name is Talvin Rome. He is a, uh, a friend of mine that I've known for many years, and I'd like to um, bring him on to explain his side of the story of being a male caregiver and the importance of how we are supposed to be as um, males have to provide care given for anybody in our family and I would like him to explain his story. So in a few moments, hopefully he'll come on and um we could talk about this. How you doing, um, Kazo? What's going on with you, bro? Hey Nikki, how you doing? Am I um choppy on this? I can't tell. It looks like I'm choppy. Can let somebody let me know if I'm choppy or not? It's sideways. Yeah, I'm trying to do it horizontal this time. I wanted to do it this way, see how it looks going horizontal. See if it works. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, but once Talvin gets in here, we'll get this on and, um, see how we can do it. So I think I got him now and, um, we can get started with this interview. So once he gets in, we can really dive into this. Hey, Talvin, what's going on, bro? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How you feeling? Uh, I can't complain, man, at all, man. I can't complain at all. I thank you for um, joining us today. Uh, oh, definitely, definitely, man. I, I appreciate what you're doing, man. I, I respect it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, the reason why I, I brought you on is because uh, a lot of times we have stroke survivors and they have caregivers and most of the time the caregiver is a woman but mm -hmm. this time around it's a man so i wanted to um, talk to you about your life and how it was before and also after um, the person in your life had a stroke so without any further ado i have um talvin rome on here he's from georgia um he was a single parent when this actually happened uh, i believe you got married and um and I hope your life is going well right now. But um, exactly. tell me about your story about who you are and um, who you actually are caregiver for. Well, I'm um, I'm a caregiver for my my mother. Um, she had a stroke in uh, 2018 of January. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into the details of what happened, or sorry, say it again. Yes, yes, please. Okay, so. Um, so yeah, like you said, I was a I'm a I was a single father at the time of three, um, and so, and I was with my uh, my girlfriend, which is now my wife at the time. We uh, was at the movies or whatnot, and um, I came back home, and my mother had she's always had issues with uh, hypertension, so and she just man for the grace of God for the first couple times it uh, wasn't the issues, but this time it was it was different. Um, so we we came home. And my mother was staying with me because my father had, had previously passed away a year a year prior to that. So she was staying with us. So I came home and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah, appreciate that. So we came home, and um, I was actually in the bed or whatnot. And my daughter came. She said she was like, "Dad," she said, "Something's wrong with." Uh, they call my my mother, Ma. She was like, "Something wrong with Ma." So I was like, "Okay, let me go back here and see what's going on." And when I got back, that she said, "I," she said, "Talvin, I'm having a stroke." So I was like, man. So she tried to stand up, and when she tried to stand up, she fell, and I, and I caught her. And I laid her back on the bed or whatnot. So we called nine one one. When nine one one came, um, 
I don't, I didn't, they, to me, they, they were being ripped very nonchalant. It was like, I don't think she's having a stroke or whatnot. They pretty much dismissed it. Um, but they took her anyway after a long period of time. They took her to Grady. And around that time period, um, it was a flu epidemic going on. And so the hospital was packed out when we got to Grady. Um, it was so bad, man, that when they finally took my mother to the back, they ended up putting her in a uh, what they call an overflow room, which was actually a snack room. It was tables and a vending machine in this room where my mother was at. What? So, yeah. Yeah, I thought I had told you that, but yeah, definitely. Nah, yeah, so it, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was it was it was that bad, man. So, um, so of course, you know, we hear she has a stroke or whatnot, um, and reality doesn't really hit you, man. But it didn't hit me until the next day when I come back to the hospital, and she can't move her left arm, and mm-hmm. she's telling, and she's like, and because I see everything she's doing, she's doing with her with her, with her right hand, with her right hand, and she's trying to do things. I see her trying to move in the bed, and she can't. So reality's kind of kind of setting in for me. Okay. And when I see her, it's something on her left side, and she reaches with her right hand. And I asked her, I said, Mom, I said, you can't, you can't move your left hand or arm? And she was like, no, she can't move her left arm. And she started crying. And to me, that was one of the hardest things because I had never seen my mother vulnerable, like, ever. Like, we, I didn't come from that, that hug family, that I love you family. I always knew they loved me, but we, that just wasn't us. So to see her break down like that, to me, man, that, that, that was the hardest thing. Um, I don't know if you just want to ask me questions, man, because I'll ramble all day long. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So just so just ask me some questions, man. All right. So so basically, before this happened, what kind of job did you have? Did you have any so, professional experience with dealing with caregiving? So I sort of, kind of. I, so one of my jobs, I was working. I worked two jobs. Um, one of my jobs, the part time job, I, I worked at a um, an assisted living facility. So they had the independent side and they had, of course, the assisted living side. And I didn't really um, do too much as far as um, I saw what was going on. The only time I, w- I maybe would help is if someone fell and the CNAs couldn't pick them up. So, of course, I would provide assistance. Um, but just being around, cause I, I, I would see them. I would speak to the residents at times and things like that. But no experience in that caregiving at all. I did, I did not know what to expect. I didn't know what all that entailed. Yeah, I'm I'm very intrigued to hear your story because when I, when I think about caregiver, obviously I I think of a woman doing it, and I guess I'm sexist with that. But as a man, um, like for instance, I can give you an example. Like my my grandmother, when she died or before she died, she always would tell us, "I want you to carry my casket to to the gravesite." I'm like, okay, you know, that's what I'm thinking as a man. Like I, I got it. Mm-hmm. That's the type of protection I have to do or that's the type of thing like be, be strong and carry right. her, but it's this is a different ball game altogether. How do you actually prepare yourself for you to transform from being that provider, that worker, um, that strong man, and then all of a sudden you have to be like a nurse. How did that work out? Yeah, man, it, it is, man. Because you know, we're we're taught to not show emotions. We're taught to always be stoic. You know, in like the last thing I ever thought is that I would be having to give my mother showers. I would have to wash my mother up and things of that nature. And it's something you really don't prepare for. Um, the, when I, I guess when it, another reality hit me in the rehab facility, when I saw that she wasn't going to be a normal self, she wasn't going to be able to, 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 to just go to the restroom on her own. She wasn't going to be able to get in the shower on her own. So when the medical staff tells you, say, hey, look, we're going to show you how to do this. So when they're bringing out the soap and they're bringing out the, the little small tub and they're bringing out the rags and they're saying, hey, we're going to show you all how you can do this. Like, there is no time to prepare. You just you just do it. Um, and I had a choice, man. I could have either let her go to a nursing home or I could have took care of her. So And I chose, man, to take care of her because I, I, I know what goes on, goes on in nursing homes. Um, so you really don't prepare. You just do it. You just do it. So that, that that's 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 a good thing. That, like honestly, like I never thought about it. Like if my mom and the, and I guess as we get older and our parents get older, these are the things that we might have to be forced into. So by you taking on this role, like why didn't anybody else in your family do it? Why was you the person that felt like you had to be the caregiver? 
Um, you know what, man? I guess what. So my mother and father had two sons, no, 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 no sisters. Um, and I just, I just felt like if it was, if somebody was gonna do it, it, it would had have been me. I was in a better position, as far as um having my own living space. Um, it, to me, it wasn't a question of if anybody else doing it. Now, I, I, I had an aunt who reached out that wanted to help. You know what I mean? But she's seventy something years old. What is she gonna really gonna be able to do? Um, but no one else really even to reach out to help. Um, and, and, and it is what it is. You know, I, I didn't expect it. With me being the oldest son, me being in the position, and me just feeling like, hey, man, I, I'm going to do this, I did it. And, and, and that's, that's it. So by you doing this and becoming this caregiver for your mother and um, doing all this stuff for her, you know, as, like, describe it as a man. Like, how, like, I'm, I'm really trying to understand it. Like, I, I can't imagine bathing my mother, getting my mother up, uh, cleaning my mother, seeing my mom in a in a in a, a vulnerable state. As a man, what does that do for you, and how did that initially affect you as a man? Man, it's 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 hard. <laughs> it, it's hard to say the least. I mean, you really have to just. It's it's a certain love, man, that I, I think you, you go to a whole nother place as a man. And it's it's funny how, you know, you were talking earlier about, you know, being sexist or whatnot. And I think, man, it's 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 something in us, I can say that stoicism, that, that hardness, you have to leave that out, man. And you have to go to that place, man, in your heart where it's like I don't know. It's 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 hard to des to describe. And for me, I'm still not to the point to where uh, it's just okay. It's cool. Where it's natural. You know what I mean? Like you know, it's 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 still always okay. Like man, I really don't 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 want to do this. Not that I don't want to help her, but I don't want to uh, be in that vulnerable position or that vulnerable state. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, um, I, and I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this up. This that stoic stuff because like when I had my stroke. The first thing I thought about was my daughters. I'm like, I can't protect my daughters anymore. And I talked to one of my friends, um, a great friend of mine in New York. His name is Kente Morgan. He was telling me, Greg, strength is not necessarily how big you are, how much push-ups you can do. Strength is how you can actually be a man and still be that person for your daughters mentally. So mm -hmm. that is what I'm, I'm seeing that you're saying that you had to do. You had to dig down deep and find those nurturing skills that you probably never even thought you had and then yeah. apply it to your mother. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I think, it's, I think, man, I, when it comes to being a man, for me, man, I learned that it's, it's about doing what's necessary. It's about getting out your comfort zone. It's not about doing what's comfortable. Um, you know, being tough, you know, holding back tears, you know, fighting, all that stuff. That's that's easy stuff. You know what I mean? That's We've been taught to do that, man, since we were, yeah, you know, when we were little boys. You know, but being able to being able to 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 feed feed someone, care for someone like constantly, like check on someone that's an adult constantly, like change like diapers and do this stuff constantly. You know what I mean? Like be gone somewhere, like enjoying yourself and have to get up and leave and come back. You know because you know I have I may have to give her some medicine or just change her position in the bed and things of that nature. Like that's that's love. Like that's 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 <laughs> that's serious. Yeah, it's definitely serious. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Now, how did you make that transformation? And it seems like you you are a type of person that's very um, grounded within yourself, grounded within your family. So you you made that conscious decision to say, hey, nobody else is going to do this. I got to do it. And I'm going to be a man, a new definition of a man, or I guess a renaissance man, to actually <laughs> be able to be a provider, be able to be able to get married, take care of my three children. And also, hey, mom, you're my mom. I love you. I got you too. So that's what I'm seeing from you. Yeah, man. Like, man, my my. So my parents, man, were were everything to me. You know what I mean? So if it was if it was my father, I would have done the same thing. To me, man, it's about loyalty. You know what I mean? And I don't I don't associate with a lot of people in my family because they're not loyal. And and to and my mother has always been 100 with me always in every facet of my life and when i say that man i'm not even talking about just that she done stuff for me or she told me when i was right my mother told me when i was wrong you know what i mean my mother would is is the epitome of realness to me so me knowing what goes on in nursing homes and me seeing her in that hospital crying me knowing that that 
I could offer a little bit of comfort by telling her that, hey, look, I'm going to take care of you. I'm not going to throw you away. Like when I told her that to see the tears stop and to see that, that that little bit of hope come back, that's what helped me, man, push through everything and to do what was necessary for my mom. So now now, now you, you really bring up another thing, because as a man, that's the one thing that we always want to do. We always want to take care of our number one lady is our mom. We always want to make her happy. So basically, you're, you're telling me is that you gave her comfort to understand that she's not going to be alone, that she's not going to be a burden to you. She's not going to be a person that you have to worry about, but you are going to take care of her and she's going to live a fulfilling life. That's that's dope. Right. That's the right. great message that you gave me. I, I like that. I mean, you just you offer what you can. You know what I mean? You offer right. what you can and you, stand, and you stand on that. Right. So how's your mom now and what kind of ailments did you have? Because you said this was 2018. This was like a... So it was 2018. So, she, so she's better now. So she's so far as like getting around, so I still have to put her in the shower, but she can actually, you know, help, help now. Um, she can go to the restroom on her own so she can, you know, change herself or whatnot. Um, but like you already know, like before, before you came and spoke with her, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, it was like she wouldn't do anything. You know, it's as as patient as I was trying to be and as motivational as I was trying to be and understanding as I was trying to be, you know, she knew that I hadn't went through what she went through. But for when you, when you came over and spoke with her, for her to hear those words coming from someone who laid in the same bed and who was in the same state as she was, it gave her hope, it inspired and it motivated her. So ever since then, she's been progressing. Of course, she still, she still does it. She's not, you know, Back to her to being, you know, the mom I know she can't move around free like she wants. I still have to feed her, give her food to her. I still have to, you know, get her medicine and, and whatnot. But far as progression, oh, she's she's progressed greatly since since the last time you saw her. Like I said, she's she's moving around her on her own. She can like if the doorbell rings and and uh, PT shows up, but and, and if I don't hear it, oh, she can get up and go get it herself. Now. <laughs> she's both oh, yeah. I like that. So, but yeah. you brought up an yeah. interesting point. You brought up an interesting point. You say that. Basically, when I came over and spoke to her, and um, I, I I known you for many years. Actually, you was the usher in my wedding. That was about what two thousand and one. Mm-hmm. So I known you for a very long time, and um, right. it was an honor for me to do something like that. But you're you're basically telling me something here that uh, we as stroke survivors need that push, and our caregivers might not know it. So you're basically saying that me call, talking to your mom helped her out to motivate her to start doing things. So let's talk right. about before that actually happened, how you were, how was your mom before I actually came over? So before before then man, it was it was a lot of lot of the um I guess I I'll use the word depression. It was just a lot of depression, a lot of uh, of 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 just lack of hope. You know what I mean? Like she would have brief, brief moments. And I was doing my best, especially when I was in her presence, to stay motivated. But after a while, you know, it drains on you as well. And it's it's hard to keep, like, to, to, to motivate him. Like when she doesn't, she can't, like she can't move. But I know she can move. You know what I mean? Because it's times where, where if, if I'm not around, she would do things. Or if she didn't realize, so for instance, I was like, Mom, you can actually stand up, but she wouldn't believe it. So what I would do sometimes, I would just put my hand on, on her on her arms and she would and make her think I'm trying to lift her up. And so she would get up. Right. But if I just tell but if I don't stand there, she wouldn't believe it. You know what I mean? So it became frustrating because it's like, I'm trying I'm trying to rest. I'm trying I'm working because I'm working two jobs and taking care of th- taking care of three kids. So I'm trying to get her to realize like, look, mom, I'm going to help you. I'm not going to leave you, but you gotta help yourself as well. But she just was not in that state of mind. She felt like everything that she that, that was gonna be done for, I had to do it. I had to do it, like nobody else. So even when my brother got that came back in the picture and started helping, he would be at a it, it would always be me. Even if I wasn't home and he may be down the street, she would still call me. So everything was on me. Until really, until you spoke with her, and that's really when she—I guess she realized or felt like, okay, I can receive help from other people, and I not only that, I can also help myself. If that makes sense. Mhm, mhm. So basically, your mom only trusted you. She didn't trust anybody else, and she didn't even trust herself. But once she right. saw another stroke survivor, that's when she was like, "Oh snap! I can really do this, and I'm really putting a lot on you." So let's yes. let's talk about that stuff that was on you. What was that? What was that? 
was there any frustration or any disappointment? Like you said, it was depression. Was that on your part or just on your mom's? Explain that. No, it was, it, it was on both our parts. Um, because like I say I eat, I'm tired. I had to go to the hospital twice because of my own blood pressure. Just was 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 high. Um, I would be I would be working, so working two jobs. I get off one job at eleven. I would come home. She had like thirteen different medications. So and and I'm and I'm I'm already uh, I'm tired. I'm nervous. I'm trying to get this medication together. Some of the medications she couldn't swallow, so I'm having to grind up these pills, make sure I'm giving the right medication, and then get to, to my other job, which was a mile away from my house. Luckily, and get to work by twelve. I get there. She might call me thirty minutes later because maybe she done threw up. Maybe her leg is hurting. She now she needs this other medication, or she may just want me to move her leg because it's hurting in in in, in the position that it's in. So I things, things that family fe friends don't understand happens each and again. every day. Things that friends and family again. don't understand that's happening each and every day. Things that just no, they don't. Don't know things they, that happen. They don't. Nobody realize. They, right, right, right. But but of course you got yeah, and you but you got people questioning. You know, is he doing a, a good job? Is she okay? Of course you hear that stuff, but no one's coming to help. You know what I mean? But no one knows what exactly what I'm doing. And I'm not, and, I, and me, I'm not going to ask you, and I'm not whining to you either. You know what I mean? I got this over here. You mind your business. If you want to help, fine, but I ain't with the other stuff. But anyway, so you, so so just imagine dealing with that. I'm at work, have to leave, go back, clean her up, or whatnot, fix her, whatever, or whatever she needs. I might go right back to work, and an hour later, have to go back. Or it may be a good night. She might be actually being able to rest that night. I would leave on my lunch break at six. I'm sorry, at five. Go home, get my kids up for, uh, for school, wash her up, change her up, fix her breakfast, put my youngest son on the bus, go back to work, uh, leave at eight, come home, put the other two on the bus, and then hopefully I can I can sleep until twelve or one o'clock. Get up, fix her next her uh, her another dose of medicine, get her lunch, and then I shoot to my my uh my first job, my main job. So it was it was it was frustrating, man. It was I said it again. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm hearing all this stuff, and you know, and like once again, I'm not trying to be sexist or anything, but a woman will be like, "Well, this is a normal thing, normal day for a single woman. This is what we do all the time." But what we have to understand is that as men, we're, we're I want to say that we're not capable, but we're not um, trained to be this particular nurturer. So all this stuff is coming on to you, and now you having all these issues, and most likely you're not in the caregiver community to actually get help you just basically doing this on your own so like you said your blood pressure went up what was going on with that man so the first the first day when i really realized something was wrong I, I had been working man crazy hours for a long time so it got to the point where i always felt tired so to me i just was tired that's what i was thinking so i woke up one day i got, got my mom's medication or whatnot and man i, I went i laid back down and I was just, my hands just start shaking, just shaking. And I was like, man. So then my head started hurting, man. And I was like, you know what, man, something's not right. So I called my uh, my, my job's nurse line or whatnot, spoke with them. She was like, the lady was like, go to the hospital. So I went to the hospital, man, blood pressure. I forget what it was, but the, the doctor was like, it was sky high. So I stayed there, man, pretty much all day. I had a buddy come through. Um, and and I'll, I'll speak about him actually because he and his his uh, lady friend at the time, she was an RN. They started coming helping me put my mother in the shower because um, they saw when, when nobody else helped her. Um, so that was the first time I went to the doctor or whatnot. He was saying it was my schedule. And he actually told me, he said, what you're doing? He said, you cannot, you can't keep this up. He said, I can't believe you've been doing it this long. He was like, it's, it's impossible for you to keep this up. He was like, if you don't stop what you're doing, you're going to have a stroke or you're going to have a heart attack and die. So I wow. took the next day, but I had to go right back into it because who else was going to do it? Um, and then the second time was the same situation, but around that time, and I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but that is when I ended up getting married. So then my wife was able to help me. Then it's two, that's when you came and spoke with my mother. So that kind of, kind of, uh, I guess, fixed it, so to speak. So, okay. To a degree. To a, to a degree. So, so you're basically saying, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but you know, uh, a stroke survivor came over, and I can remember the conversation I had with your mom. She she was talking to me. She was asking me, "Can you cook?" And I'm like, "Yes, I can cook." She said, "Can you drive?" I was like, "Yes, I can drive." And she was like, mm -hmm. "I want to do that too." So I'm like, "Okay, that's cool." And then I said, "The next time I come over, me and you're going to be walking." And the next time I came over, 
she was walking. So like you mm-hmm. like you saying, it, it was it was it was a it was a switch that she didn't understand, nor did you understand that was needed. Mm-hmm. That once yep. you, once you guys got that switch, like okay, now we can do what we have to do. Now life can actually move forward. So I guess it was right. it was that point of not understanding what life was as a stroke survivor, as a caregiver, and all the responsibilities on the caregiver as well as the patient. And um, and you brought up a very interesting thing, and I hear this a lot too. A lot of stroke survivors uh, are capable of doing things, but mentally they're not there to do it until they get the proper motivation to do that. So that was the motivation. It got her ready, got her right. How's your blood pressure now, bro? Oh, I'm good now. I'm good now, man. Um, but you know, my, my my diet is pretty good, and I work out. Then, man, it was just pretty much because of, because of that schedule, not not sleeping. Um, because mind you, while we're taking care of her, I got three kids. You know what I mean? Three teenagers. Two teenagers. Yeah, yeah, two teenagers and a, and a little boy running around, and they're active. You know what I mean? You talking about sports? Up, 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 up. So you got two teenage daughters. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Man. Who, 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 who I would be remiss if I didn't say, man, when, when the second time when I came back from the hospital, man, I think they under they they really understood what was going on. Uh, they 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 actually got the paperwork, and I and I and I heard them reading it, and they came in at me. They said, "Dad, said, are you okay? Like, what, what are they talking about?" And my two daughters, man, really started helping. My son, even now, he always checks on his grandmother, always. Like, I didn't realize that they knew what was going on. They just didn't understand the toll it was taking on me. But, man, so they, they really start stepping it up. And to your point about the women, so at the time, I think they were, what, like, 15, 15 and 13. So what, the things that would take me 25, 30, 40 minutes to do, as far as, like, cleaning her up or whatnot, might have took them 15, 20 minutes by themselves. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's just you know, like you were talking about before, it's like that that nurturing and knowing how to. Who is that? I'm vibe. Hey, hey, um, who um, like you would just it's just it's just something in them, man. But like like they they they, they them, them too. They also I feel like they they save they save us. You, my my girls, man, and my buddy, my buddy Holcomb and his uh his lady friend Leslie, which is my friend as well. Well, Trajana says something. Uh, let me see what Trajana said real quick. Can you okay. read? It? Mm-hmm. Question does not um, truly understand strokes and uh, realize that the, what the brain is. Yeah, the, I, I get that too. It's like out of space. Oh, um, I was really and um, you could probably could talk about this as well too. Because when I had my stroke, um, I had mine in Kentucky. That I had to come back down to Georgia, and I met new doctors. And every time I met a new doctor, they asked me, "What should we do? Do you want to do this? You want to do that? Do you?" Did you have that same type of experience when you got new doctors or new therapists with your mom? And was that fun? Um, what, what was frustrating? No, the doctors. Yeah, it, it was because like no one knew. You know what I mean? It, it just it was all it was always a guessing game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, you know, and I, like, and, and what she's saying is so true because it was like, okay, we're gonna try this, so we're gonna try that, we're gonna try this, so we're gonna try that. And at the rehab facility, you know, the doctor actually showed frustration. I was there one day and. He came back and he asked the nurse something about her vitals, her blood pressure, whatnot, and it wouldn't go down. And he kind of like showed frustration. And to me, I'm kind of like, well, you know, that's fine if you're going to do that, but don't do that in front of my mother. You know what I mean? The person you're supposed to be helping, who she's supposed to be trusting you. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I definitely get that. And I found frustration, man, with, with the first set of uh, PT and um, occupational therapists that, that came through. Um it just seemed like some of them just like didn't really know what they were doing, and if this didn't work, it was like, oh, okay, oh well. So yeah, so I, I get, I, I get what, she, what you're saying and what she's saying. It's 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 like you're a good guy, you're a caregiver, but you know, I had to go through two, three caregivers to find the right one for me, and um, it was very frustrating dealing with that and also trying to find medical help for myself and everybody mm-hmm. guessing yeah. what I am, what's wrong with me. And and they, and they always say to me, "Oh, you look great for a stroke survivor." I'm like, oh, uh, uh, "Thank you, but I feel terrible. Like, can you help me? I don't know what's wrong with you." So yeah, it was frustrating for me. So I just wanted to know how it was for you as a caregiver, and especially dealing with your mom. And you know, I guess it sounds like she was the rock of your family, the rock of your life, and now she's really relying on you. And people are not stepping up to the plate as the medical field, and that that could be very heart heartbreaking. 
So let me let me ask you something. You you, you said something that I found really pretty uh, interesting. You know, you was dating your your now wife. How how did that affect your love life? You know, mm-hmm. now you're taking care of your mom, and now your lady's here, and most likely you moved in with your lady, and she's living with your mom. How did how did that work out? So let me tell you. Okay, so. So Bree and I actually know each other, man, from from our middle school. We're actually, first loves, right? Seventh grade and sixth grade. So we were together, man. Like I said, middle school, part part of high school. Then, of course, you know how life does or whatnot. We get back together, and my mom and my father love her to death. Um, her mother and my grandmother actually work together. We're pretty, we're actually, pretty cool friends or whatnot. So when we get back together, everything's is 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 great or whatnot. So we talking about man, you know, potentially getting married, moving in or whatnot, and then this happens. So my mother's at the hospital. Of course, I really don't know how how the extent of the uh of the of the damage done until she leaves the uh, rehab facility and she comes home, and that's when Brianna comes to the house and she sees the hospital bed and sees my mother laying in the middle of my of my living room now. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself. We're making these plans, but there's no way that we're going to be able to progress with these plans at this point. I'm thinking to myself, and it wasn't to be honest, man, because she's so sweet. I, it wasn't. I'm thinking that she's thinking it's going to be a burden for her, but I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be a burden. Um, I already have, I have my kids. Like I'm, I'm not going to be able to give the attention that I need or whatnot. So, so I'm sorry. Say it again. It's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So this is so this is what happens. So. And I'll just be 100, man, since we talking about the whole man thing. But, you know, you know how we are. I was married. Man, went through that. Got it, got, got divorced. I'm out here, man. Like, life is good. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm like I'm having a good time, right? So you start thinking to yourself, man, like, I don't know if man, we're going to get married again. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know about that. Right, so, right, right. So I get back with Bree, and, you know, and we talking about it, talking about it. But, of course, in your mind, you're like... Mm, he talking about it. We, I'm not. We're not engaged. No one. I. She hasn't said yes. I hadn't said yes. So I'm thinking. So, so I'm still kind of like. Mm, I don't know if I want to go back into that life. That is kind of cool. But then, like I said, then this happens. But I'm gonna tell you, man. What what really made me be like, boy, you a fool if you don't marry this woman. Wow. So when she, when she when she came over when she came to the house, she saw my mom, and I saw it in her face that she was like, man, your mom like I, she's like she was feeling bad for her. she really saw the extent. So that night when we spoke, I was getting ready to say, hey, look, I know we've been talking about all this stuff, but we're going to have to put it on hold. So I brought it up. I said, hey, Bri, I said, look, I, uh, I, I said, I know we're talking about, you know, uh, moving in, potentially getting married, whatever, whatever. And I was like, but, you know, you see my mom. And she was like, yeah, she said. So I started looking. So as so soon as I, she said that, she said, yeah, and my phone started beeping. So I looked at it. She's sending me text messages. So she sent me the, we were already, we were looking at houses. She started looking at houses that had a room on the main floor with a bathroom that was accessible. So in her mind, it, it had never occurred to her that, oh no, this ain't going to happen. And for, to her, it was just, oh, we're just going, yeah, we, we're going to adapt. Her whole thought was, I'm going to adapt the house search, not us. Yeah, that's the point right there. And man, and it's like, so when we get over here, so now like the times, man, where like she start working from home. So it's like now like I'm actually getting to be able to rest. She's doing this. I, I get up, you know, because I'm thinking I got to do this. And she's like, no, lay down. I already took care of that. I already done that. I already done that. Go rest. Lay down. Go rest. I already done that. You know, we might be sitting here. She, my mom might call me do something. Don't worry about it. I'll go do it. You already been down a few times already. I got that. Wow. Like blessed. Man. <laughs> blessed. Yeah, that, that's definitely blessed, man. Cause yeah. um, that's she, she truly loves you. That, that, yeah, that, that's dope. Like right now, you are a caregiver, but you're basically doing it with your wife, and that, I, I, yeah. I applaud you for that. And yeah. I, I know, I, I think I met her the first time was um, who's that? Was it uh, was a Dave Chappelle concert downtown? That's a fact. Yep, yep. <laughs> Dave Chappelle yep. concert was before I had my stroke. I met out. I know I was tipsy. I was drunk in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> I was all over. I was slurred all over the place. But nah, she, you, were, you, you were good. You were good. You were good. good. But, but she kept her yeah. home, man. And I could tell how much she cared for you. And I was like, yo, this is dope. My man found a woman that is really appreciative of him. I, I, Definitely. I, I applaud that. And then yeah. you guys get married. That's dope. That's, hey. Yeah. 
she bought everything. Because I don't, like I say, man, without without her, like actually us being together and, and without her and, and without you talking to her, bro, I don't know what would have happened. To be honest, like I have no idea like where I would be right now or what state I would be right now if it wasn't for her in that conversation you coming over speaking with my mom. Like I have no idea where I would be. Wow, that's a blessing, man. God is good, man. I love that. De definitely, definitely. So let, let me ask you something, man. Like now, you know you're 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 married now. You're mm -hmm. you three kids. Does she have any kids? Yeah, she has three. Mm -hmm. She has three kids too. Mm -hmm. So that's six kids plus your your mother. So that's seven people, well, nine people living in the house. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yep. Okay, yep. so now you have you have the Brady bunch going on, and you have yep. your mother that you're taking care of. Um, yep. How how is how is life now? How's everybody adjusted to it? I guess it was what two years later, almost three years. How's everybody almost adjusted? Man, it's it's everyone has, has adjusted. Um, it wasn't a. Uh, for, I mean, so this is the thing. So everybody was like, oh, man, how, how are y'all going to get along with all them kids, whatever, whatever. And you see how the house is. The house is made perfectly for the family. So there's no really, you know, of course, you know, they're kids. So they kind of, you know, they get into it every now and then, man. But, you know, they, they're, they're, they're kids. Everyone loves each other, man. It, to, I'll, 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 I'll say it plainly by saying this. It couldn't be better. I'll just say that. It couldn't be better. Mm. Her kids, man, love my kids, man. She Like, they'll check on her. You know, they, they may come up here, hey, uh, your mom needs such and such. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's all love. It's all love. That's beautiful, man, because, whew, that's, first of all, having those two, three extra kids and they're also taking care of your mother as well and everybody's blending together and everybody's doing their part. Man, you can't ask for more than that. You know, that's, that's all blessings right there. So definitely my, my next question is like, how's your social life? I guess it's not really irrelevant because first of all, we're in COVID and now you're basically your family, your, your nucleus is great. So I guess your social life is, is cool. Man. Yeah. I got my, I got my social life back, you know, for a while it, it, it was, it, it was bad. You know what I mean? It was non-existent. Right. Um, but it was something I didn't mind sacrificing to be honest at the time. You know what I mean? But now, uh, so before COVID last year, you know, me and wifey, man, you know, we always out and about. Just like when you saw us, we always out and about. Take the kids out on the weekends and whatnot. Um, or sometimes, man, like, like I said, I'm dying in the room with my mom, my son coming there, daughter's coming there, man, kick it with her. So, um, like, life, life is, is good. Like, I, I can't complain. You know what I mean? I, I, I can't complain. So let me ask you something. As, as a man um, being thrown into this uh, and you actually throwing your life into this with making a new family and everything. But as a man, what, what can you tell a man? And, and I'm not telling you to speak for every type of man. I'm talking about as a black man, because that's who you are. How do you tell another black man about how to prepare themselves? Because eventually something's going to happen, God forbid, to their loved one, to their mother or their father, and they're going to have to take care of them. You know, what things do you think that you should have had before that you want to give somebody else? What information? Man, to be honest, I don't know if you can prepare for this unless you're in the medical field. You know what I mean? I think it's just, I think it's just, it, it boils down to just doing what's necessary. And I think one of the most important things that I did know and understand was to, to, to show patience, um, to never to never show frustration in front of them um and just to and i always told myself like things are going to get better things are always going to get better so to try to be as hopeful and prayerful prayerful as you possibly can um and i think with the people that you're caring for um like you pointed out i i could i could tell tell her tell her tell her all day long this 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 and be right but i think it's it's important to seek help to seek people who've gone through that, who've experienced that to come in and speak with them. Cause like, I, cause you can tell them, you can tell them, but they're not going to hear it. It's like a baseball player listening to a, a, a football coach. He's not trying to hear it. I, they need someone with that experience, someone with that, who, 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 who actually knows what it's like to go through that. So I would say definitely, man, like know that you got to do what's necessary. Um, and also bring in someone who's gone through that, who can speak to them. Cause they could, cause they'll hear them. They're not going to hear you. Yeah. Cause 
I, I, I'm not sure if I told you this or not, but I finally did. But I, I spoke to a couple of people, and uh, one of the first people was on here now, Trezana, she me and her talk all the time. And we always talk to each other and say that the old Greg, the old Trezana, that person is dead. And there's a new person that came back, and that's mm. the person that you're dealing with right now. So did you have that same type of experience with your mom that your mom that you knew is gone and this new person is here and you're trying to adapt to it? And was that frustration or, or what? <laughs> You know what? It's 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 honestly it's like she's two people. Um, so it's sometimes when I'm when I'm when I'm downstairs in the room and I'm sitting talking with her, she seems like her old self. But more so than not, she seems like she is a new person. If that you know you know what I mean. Sometimes she just she doesn't really like really seem like like she's like my mom anymore. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just more so like an adjustment. You know what I mean? But it does seem like she's two people. Like she like she goes back and forth. Between between who she is at times. How did that affect you? Like, because uh, I'm that's I'm a, oh, that's a, I'm a of me. Like, like I see it. Like I know that I'm different, and I have to mm -hmm. explain to people all the time. Like, hey, that stuff you're talking about, ah, that's old me. I don't really deal with that no more. So now you're talking with your mom, and this person is you knew since birth. So now yeah. she's different. How do you, how do you handle? It? Does that get frustrating to you? It, it, you know what, it's crazy. So, out of again, back to the whole man thing, the stoicism and everything. It, I, I'm, I'm stubborn. I know I'm stubborn. But it, at the at the times though, man, what where I would I would would concede like that I don't know when I when I had an issue, I had a problem. If I if I sought wisdom, most of the time it was my mother who I go to. Mm. So now, if I go to her, I don't know which person I would get. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So so I feel like I lost that to a degree. Because mm -hmm. she's put me on point with a lot of things, with a lot of things. A lot of times, man, when I just knew I was right and, and done something stupid throughout my life, you know, she would be the one, Mom, I, I done messed up, I done done this, and she would tell me how to fix it. Or she would tell me, you about to mess up. Or she would tell me, yeah, you don't know it yet, but you messed up. You know what I mean? So it's like now, it's like, you know, it's like I, I, I lost that. So yeah, so it, to a degree, it's, it's frustrating. Say it again. Yeah, so it is frustrating. So that that's that's the thing that I I, I fail to understand as a stroke survivor. I and and I don't know if your mom is this way, but I, for lack of a better term, I don't really give a fuck about anything. Um, yeah. And I, I I I'm stuck in my way, and I want my way, but I do understand mm -hmm. that other people have feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, but like. When I do talk to my caregiver, my mom or my sister or my ex wife that was my caregiver, um, I had to tell them straight up, I'm not that same person anymore. Don't rely on me like how you used to rely on me before, but don't treat me like I'm a child. Do you guys have that same type of conversations? Um, She's never, I, you know, I, I think talking with you, I think I, I, was, I was always cognitive of the fact of, of trying not to talk to her in a certain way. Um, so we've never, never had that conversation. She's never said anything like, hey, I'm not the same person or whatnot. Um, but I I do think she's somewhat fearless, though, because of I asked her one day because I think you I think it was after your conversation about um, you told you you're, you're not afraid of, 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 of dying. So I asked her about it. And without hesitation, she was like, no, she, she has no trepidations of death whatsoever. None. Um, so I'm pretty sure some of the other thoughts uh, that you have, she probably shares them as well. <laughs> she does, <laughs> yeah. Because she talks to me, and I I can tell that she does. Because it, it's it's weird. Because like we're in some kind of fraternity or sorority of uh, stroke survivors, and we understand each other. And, and like when we get together, we we really get each other. But we can't stay around yeah. each other too long because we get annoyed and frustrated with each other. But <laughs> it's it's true. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You you you'd be surprised. But. Uh, for you and your mother to have that type of relationship that you had before and now, or that bond that you had before and now, and you can still see that light that coming out of her, she really appreciates it. I'm telling you, she appreciates it. Um, she feels at home. She feels comfort with you. And I, I, I can imagine that she's trying to be independent. She's trying to do her own things. And um, how, 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 yeah, let's ask that. How, how, how was that going with her? Like, her independence. Does she want to move out? Does she want to have her own place? 
like that she has as aspirations. Yeah, you, you, you do. Yep, definitely. My man, my mom was a hundred percent independent. It's like yep. she, yes, that's all she spoke about. Going back to her house, you know, driving again, going back to her job, all of that. That's all she used to speak about. Right. Not so much now. I think that reality kind of set in. Um, but it, but initially, yes, almost every day it was. I got I got to drive again. I I, I want to walk again. I want to do this myself. I want to do that myself. So yeah, definitely, definitely. So tell them, um, we're almost out of time. So I want to leave this last couple of minutes for you. I want you to like leave us with things. Um, any closing thoughts or anything that you want to leave to the community of stroke survivors or caregivers uh, that they need to know, or anything that you have on the top of your mind. Your floor. I mean, just, I mean, I guess just from a, a caregiver point of view, just some, I guess, just recap on what I was saying. Just, man, do what's necessary. Um, if 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 that person, man, like you know, they loved you and they were selfless, selfless to you, then do that same for them. Um, you tell them you're gonna do something, like, like stand on it. Like they need that in that moment when they when they realize that they've had a stroke and that their life is gonna change. Know that yours is gonna change as well. Um. Be there for them, man. Like I say, um, um, keep keep your promises. And one of the most important things was 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 you. May bring in somebody who has experienced that, someone who who fought it and got their strength back, came back stronger. Because that's what I see, and you came back stronger. Bring somebody in who's educated on it. Don't try to do it by yourself. Don't try to figure it out by yourself. If you need help. You probably need to ask for help. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and just be and be there for them, and don't show frustration like to them. Like, yeah, you you need to vent. Find somewhere to vent to. Need to go somewhere. Don't do it in front of them. Don't ever make them think that they're a burden. Can't do that. Their spirits are already crushed. They can't move. They can't do certain things. They're not themselves. They don't need the only person that they trust making them feel like they're not wanted. So if you have those feelings, those, those frustrations, those burdens, man, like do it somewhere else. But when you're in front of them, you, you need to be, hey, you need to be, hey, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm happy to be here with you. I'm always going to be here with you. You got to be on your A game. You got to definitely be on your A game. There's one thing that I want to leave to add to that. Yes, you are absolutely right. You cannot bring in your depression. You can't bring in, you really have to be on your A game. But. With me, what was very frustrating for me, I don't know if you have this problem with your mom, but what was very frustrating for me is that I didn't want to make the decisions anymore, but I wanted to be included in the discussions, mm. especially when it had to do with my life. Right, right. I did not like if you just made a decision for me and I had to just live with that. That pissed me off to the 10th power. So right. you know, everything you're saying, I agree with you 100%. But do not make decisions when I know that I could be part of that actual conversation. Don't make decisions. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, Talvin Rome, I thank you so much. Um, uh, you've been an inspiration to me, brother, for a very long time. Um, you, you, you've been a very special person in my life. I've known you for a very long time. Like I said, you was in my wedding when I got married in 2001. Um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you. Um, I, I, I love you as my brother. I, I appreciate you as a family member, uh, as as a as a brother. That's who you are to me. I don't look at you. As yeah, for sure. Yep, uh, brothers, man. Love you back, man. You're the inspiration, bro. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> I'm just doing my part, brother. Do my part. Bro, I, don't, I, don't, bro, I don't. I don't. do stuff like this, man. I don't get in front of the phone and the camera and speak, man. That ain't what I do, bro. The only reason why I'm doing this is because it's you. <laughs> Okay, and I respect I you. That's much love, man. Much love, man. But hey, you guys are the unsung heroes. I really appreciate you guys. I really appreciate you dedicating your life to your mother. Thank you, brother. Love you. Peace out, man. All right, bro. Take care.